Okay. All right, so we're just waiting for people. Yep. Dum did it dum did it dum did it dum. Can they see us now? Yep, we're live. Hey everybody. Hi. That is Laura who's going to help me uh, admin some questions. Aloha, everybody. Don't I get to see a hundred faces? <laughs> No? In the future. <laughs> it's all in the future. <laughs> yeah, like a hundred little boxes. Hopefully. So those of you who are already logging in and with us, um, just so you know, that's Danny, the German Shepherd over there. And that's Sprinkles right there. And, uh, and that's Sparkles right here. So we're missing one of them. She's a little shy, but... Uh, we're all here. Don't mind me if I'm acting goofy. It's my first webinar. I think we can get started, Brian. Okay. Okay. Uh, I want to welcome everybody to Brian Kelly. And, uh, you know, all the people that are involved in this webinar with us here are people who are part of the challenge and uh, I want to thank all you guys for uh, being part of that um, it really was a amazingly supportive community still is and um, I had a great time so thank you for that and you know we want you to feel free to uh, to to give us any feedback on the challenge that you'd like um, and also uh, um, give us some input as far as uh, you know, future challenges. Uh, we were thinking about possibly doing a challenge in between our sanity challenges, you know, something during the year. I even had an idea of uh, doing a gratitude challenge, you know, supporting each other in gratitude meditation. Uh, one last thing also, I want to introduce Laura here, who is our beautiful moderator, and she's really just going to be reading your questions and, and, uh, and giving them to me and, uh, so I can respond. All right. Uh, Laura, am I missing anything, by the way? No, I think we're good to go. Okay. So um, I'm going to go through and answer some questions that you have all submitted already by email. But if you have anything else to add, please feel free to write in the chat box if you have any questions or you'd like to submit something. So um, our first question we have um, here from Paula from Dallas, and she asks, I recently retired from the Army after serving 24 years as a combat medic. Throughout these 24 years, I experienced the horrors of combat multiple times, and I truly believe that yoga has healed my mind and body. Would you consider providing free online services for military veterans? And what about any ideas for registration discounts for your retreats and workshops? Um, the last part of that I missed. It, it cut out. It's a, something for retreats and workshops? So um, Paula was asking if, if there might be any discounts for registration uh, for retreats and workshops for veterans. Um, why not? You know, why not? Um, I don't see any reason for it. Um, Paula, is it Paula? Yes. Um, you can always uh, contact us outside of this format, you know, and uh, and we could talk about it. You know, it's it, it it's uh, it's something that uh, we actually had already been considering. Do you remember that, Laura? I mean, they're about three, four years ago. We were doing um, trying to figure out some way to contribute um, to that that genre of people that have been through that, and because obviously, yeah, yoga is a an, an an incredible tool. So, yeah, why don't you contact us outside of uh, this format, and uh, we can figure out what's possible and um, what we can do. So, uh, we can be really helpful, for sure, for sure. Great, thank you, Brian. So, our next question is from Mo from Los Angeles, and he asks, "I've been practicing with Brian for over 20 years, maturing together." And at 66, the up dogs don't feel as healing after practice. Cobras and camels don't cause discomfort either. 
Um, are there any ways to modify or improve positioning of updog? And what are the what is the benefit of compressing vertebrae anyway? Um, if I'm understanding the question right, he's saying updog is irritating him, but cobras are okay. Um, and you know, I I actually have the exact same experience, which is why I teach cobra and not updog. It's just stick with cobras. You know, don't worry about updog. You know, basically cobra is a modified updog. So, um, you know, we're just trying to find the degree in any of these poses that our bodies can handle this stuff because everybody's unique. This is not, these, these poses are generic, but we're not. We're all very unique. So, you know, our job is to discover where we belong. And, you know, as updog gets more irritating, if it is, you know, you move towards cobra. Personally, I think cobra is a more thorough touch for the spine anyways. Updog is usually like a 90 degree angle in the lower back and then there's nothing on the rest of the spine. So I suggest Cobra. And the last part of that question was, uh, is there benefit to compression? You know, I don't know what the benefit to compression is. I, I've heard, rarely I've heard this, but I've heard there might be some benefit to compression. I've heard way more that there's benefit to traction, decompression. I mean, it's getting compression anyways. So, um, especially if you're irritated, I wouldn't go towards compression. Just walking around in your life, you're compressing. Gravity's pushing you down. When you do yoga, decompress. Balance it out a little bit. I wish I could be more helpful than that. And it, since you're around here in L.A., you know, if you ever want to talk after class, just let me know. Thanks, Brian. I see um, we've got a live chat question up now from Karen, and she's asking, how do you stay focused on your practice? I practiced for seven months and then got stuck and stopped. How do I break through the mental boundaries preventing me from growing? You know, the, if you practice for seven months, first of all, there's probably a reason you practice for seven months, right? You benefited from it. Number one. Number two, if you remember how that practice, and, you know, then, you know, you realize, you know, when you're not practicing, you don't have that feeling. There's something missing. Like the practice is really benefiting um, how you feel on, on pretty much every level. And, and knowing that is how I do it. You know, I realize that I need it. You know, I am the best me when I'm doing my practice every day. Um, being consistent is not easy. Um, you know, it's one of the nice things about having this challenge. And, you know, having Power Yoga online is an incredible tool towards that, and that's exact, one of the exact reasons why we created that. And I use Power Yoga online because classes are supportive. You know, it, it's hard to be a spark in the middle of the ocean. You keep getting put out, but if a bunch of sparks come together, you get a flame. You know, it's much harder to put out a flame than a spark. And, you know, when you do these online classes, it's, it is like you're part of a group. It's a little bit easier. Um, the, the last thing I want to say pertaining to that is, uh, you know, maybe you don't put so much pressure to have to do such a massive practice. You know, maybe you just say, hey, I'm going to get in down dog. That's all. I'm going to practice for five minutes. Just do that. And I guarantee you, you know, if you can practice for five minutes, after that five minutes, you'll probably be able to, you'll probably say, I could go another minute, and I can go another minute, and pretty soon, you know, you got yourself a little practice under your belt, and there's not any person in your life that won't benefit that day from you having done that, especially you. So don't put so much pressure on yourself. Just clear five, ten minutes out of your schedule, and um, start with that, and, and let it grow from there. I mean, obviously you got it. You did seven months straight. You're not, you know, you're, you know that, you know you can do it. You already did it. Thanks, Brian. For that question, live chat us again. So um, we've got another question from the input from Elizabeth from Lafayette. And she asks, in the general online yoga community, I sometimes see eating disorder behaviors such as binging and purging with yoga um, eating and not eating to further out our purity tolerated and sometimes encouraged. 
my own experience was one of my base anxiety triggered by my ego-based behavior of dieting for weight loss. What can we do to know when to share our truth and when to stay silent? Are you talking about my bulimic comments <laughs> in class? Uh, uh, I'm not really sure how to answer that question. I'm, I'm, that question was so full and rich and had uh, so many subtleties to it. Um, I'm not really sure how to answer that one. I'm not really sure what the question is within all that. It, can you be a little more specific and maybe uh, be a little more succinct with the question and maybe Laura will read the next one from you. Okay. Um, we have another question uh, from Karen in Santa Monica. And she says, first of all, thanks so much for all you do for us and for continuing the Sanity Challenge this year. I greatly value the gr group support and encouragement. Number one, would it be possible to have someone facilitate the group throughout the year to help keep the momentum going? And number two that she asks, uh, do you have any suggestions to help us better maintain a regular yoga practice throughout the year? Um, question one, it doesn't quite look like this group needs a facilitator. I mean, the truth is there hasn't been a facilitator. Um, if you're talking about someone sending out the classes, um, I'm not, Laura, is it wrong to say that there will always be a class of the day up there? That's our goal for the new system now. So you should be able to go on the classes page and every day you'll find a new class that we recommend. And you'll also see, I think, some popular classes that will naturally come up that people are selecting as well as um, classes if you save to your favorites. Okay, so first of all, I don't believe we really need a facilitator in the sense that I've been part of this group and been watching it, and the group facilitates itself. Um, if you're talking about receiving a class every day, um, I think we will have that. You know, if you go on the website, there will be a class of the day every single day. Um, so, um, and I, you know, I will always be popping in and out of that group challenge because. Um, I love it. I love the group. I love the people. I love to contribute. I'll be there right with you guys. Second part of the question, Laura, what was that again? Do you have any suggestions to help us maintain a regular yoga practice throughout the year? Well, if, if I'm not mistaken, the challenge actually was very helpful. So um, having the community is, is really, really helpful. Um, for me, um, what I do, this is just me. Everybody's different. But, um, you know, I have a place in my house I do yoga. It's my place where I practice and meditate. And um, I have a time set aside that I practice and meditate. You know, I don't teach my first class um, until 10.45 a.m. The reason for that is because my mornings are dedicated to my practice. Um, you know, I have to, sometimes I have to get up and get my kids to school, you know, so I have an hour instead of uh, two hours, but there is an hour to two hours there every morning that I have to practice. And you know, once once I miss that, it's much more difficult to practice because you know I get hungry, I get busy, my mind starts going, you know. And also later on in the day, I'm a little bit more fatigued. Um, I say set aside a time in the day that you can do this. Cut it out. Cut out some time in the, your day for you. I mean, you got to be able to do that. That would be step one before practicing, like making you a priority because, you know, uh, you know, I don't think anybody else can benefit from your presence if uh, you don't give to yourself. And I hope I answered it. Thanks, Brian. So we've got another uh, live question on the chat and coming from Heather. And she says, at, thir at 47... I'm about to start yoga teacher training. I'm very excited but nervous as well. Any advice? You're an inspiration to me and thanks for all you do. Um, my advice would be no reason to be nervous. No reason. It's going to be an amazing journey. Um, you know, I just hope that you have taken some classes with the people who are teaching the training. So 
Um, you know, you know what you're getting yourself into. You know the philosophy. You know the personalities. Um, you know, you appreciate what they have to offer already, so you want to go deeper with them. Um, you know, otherwise, it you know could bring up some more stuff if uh, you're having problems with the facilitators of the training. Um, people ask me all the time, what training should I do? This, that, the other thing, and you know, I look at trainings like as a dive deep into yoga. So, um, regardless of the style. Um, I really feel like you know there's a there's a lot of opportunity in all trainings to learn and you know sponge you know you don't have to own it all not everything's for everybody I'm sure a lot of different styles would could get in there and disagree with a lot of stuff that's going on you know so feel free to pick and choose uh, and enjoy definitely enjoy it should be amazing if it's not try mine next time <laughs> thanks Brian. So we've got another one from uh, the email input coming from uh, Claudia from Chicago. And she asks, in addition to yoga, I also try to do other activities on a regular basis. I'm also pretty consistent, but after a few months I feel exhausted and then I stop doing yoga for about a week or so because I feel exhausted. Is this normal? Mentally I miss my practice, but question how strong I am to do it right and have proper form. I've only been practicing for two years and I'm always experiencing different emotions and physical growth in my practice, but want to always try and do my poses to what I believe is right, but also accepting my own deficiencies. Should I practice even though I may not give it all my all? Yeah, you should practice and I don't really understand a lot of that question. I mean, I do understand it, but you know, I don't understand not giving it your all. I mean, you show up, you do what you can do. If you're not in the mood to do more, then you don't do more. Um, you know, if you're committing to that time to do your practice, whatever you do in that time is your practice. Um, it sounds to me that you're putting a little pressure on yourself. First of all, you talked about the correct way to do the poses. Um, this is not generic, okay? This is so personal. You know, there's not a correct way to do the pose other than the way the pose um, feels on your body in that particular day. There's seven billion ways to do every pose every Sounds like you're not giving yourself a lot of permission to be who you are and where you're at. Sounds like maybe you're a little critical with yourself and uh, I just say have less expectations, be more gentle, and show up onto your yoga mat. You know, uh, are you doing our challenge? Are you doing these these uh, these classes? Because, you know, we're not you know rigid or dogmatic in the way the form of these poses is expressed. I I don't know if you learned something from someone else and you're bringing it into this, but obviously it's not working. Sounds like it uh, has you a little bummed out about it. If you do need to take a week off now and then, take a week off. It doesn't mean that you can't do a little meditation, right? It doesn't mean you can't maintain your practice. How about you walk? Take some long walks during that week. Thanks, Brian. We've got another question on live chat coming from Sharon. And she asks, do you recommend taking a live yoga class maybe once a week in addition to the online daily practice? In other words, I'm missing, am I missing anything from not being in a live class, like perhaps adjustments if I'm not doing a pose correctly? I'm on the East Coast, so no chance of getting into Brian's class. I'm sure that, I'm sure that, uh, you know, there's different opinions on that question. Um, you know, I'm not quite sure how to answer that because I don't, I don't really feel like you're missing anything because... I'm not a big fan of adjustments, you know. I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, I I am a fan of suggestions, and you know maybe, you know, a live look at your poses and and make some helpful suggestions. Yeah, um, it might be beneficial. Um, you know, uh, I don't know. You know, uh. You know, there's a lot of online classes. A lot of these teachers have online classes, and 
you know, when they teach these poses, they might make all the suggestions um, for the pose online. So do you need to be in a live class um, to personalize it to your uniqueness? I don't think it can hurt. I'm not 100% sure it will help. Why don't you give it a try? See. Thanks, Brian. We've got another one on the live chat coming from Lynn. And she's asking, um, can you speak of your philosophy on diet? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, it's very personal. Um, but I really truly believe the key is moderation. Moderation. Not too much and not too little. Everything else is very personal. You know, should you eat meat? Should you be a vegetarian? You know, do you want to go vegan or you want to go paleo? Uh, maybe you maybe you want to do a little bit of both. Can you believe it's possible? There's actually vegan paleos. It's a lot harder, but you can do it. Um, what time of day is optimal for your body to eat? You know, stuff like that. I just like to emphasize, you know, whatever you eat, try to make it organic. Try to make it clean healthy food with as little chem chemical additives as possible and that was produced in a way that's nurturing the Mother Earth instead of de detracting you know um, with all these pesticides, herbicides, uh, you know chemical fertilizers and so on and so forth which uh, not only harm us but, but harm Mother Earth. You know if you have a choice don't buy plastic. Thanks Brian. Uh, we've got another one uh, sent in from email, and it's coming from Jim in Marietta. And he asks, Brian, if we practice the class of the day from the website, is that similar to getting the emails of classes for the week during the Holiday Sanity Challenge? Yes, it is. The only difference would be maybe the time of the classes. You know, on the Sanity Challenge, the classes were specifically timed right like because we wanted to make that this accessible to you during a really busy time of our lives right so we kept the classes um, you know shorter we kept we had what half hour classes hour classes we only did one hour and a half class the whole week so um, you know if that is uh, something that you need shorter classes then you'll have to go into the catalog and pick shorter classes for yourself um, but other than that it, it will be the same you know and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, you know people that continue doing the sanity challenge after our end date uh, continue um, doing the class of the day and giving feedback on it I wouldn't be surprised um, anyways this is something that can be mentioned you know on that private Facebook group and uh, see what kind of response we get you know one thing you guys don't know is is that I think there was I don't know seven eight nine hundred people that actually are not on Facebook that joined us and they received their classes through email right um, those people certainly won't be involved but then again they probably weren't giving us feedback Next question. We have a question coming in from Karen in uh, Milford, Michigan. And she asks, has there ever been a study on the longevity of yogi types? And do they generally live longer and healthier? Not that I know of. Not that I know of. Um, not that I know of. Um, I don't know if they live longer or healthier. Um, but my assumption is they live happier. You know, uh, India is, uh, uh, you know, pretty unhealthy place in a lot of ways, whether it's the air pollution or the quality of food or um, level of bacteria, stuff like that. I don't, I don't know how that would affect those yogis. And, you know, this is so new to Americans that um, if we were going to measure the longevity of yogis, we'd probably have to go over there um, to do that. Um, but you know I do know as far as like for me that um, it's definitely allowed me to age much more gracefully 
um, than otherwise. I mean, I, I I can feel the difference between doing yoga and not doing yoga. But as far as uh, longevity is concerned, um, I haven't read any uh, anything about that. I will add one last thing, though, that I did read about longevity. Um, there's a, um, a, a professor at UCLA um, named Roy Walford, who's a professor of gerontology, which is the science of aging. And they've done some experiments with rats and monkeys, and now they're doing it with humans. But, of course, our lifespan is so much longer than rats and monkeys. This experiment is taking longer with humans. But they are seeing that they saw with the rats and monkeys. And that was is that they, uh, they, ha they took two groups of rats and two groups of monkeys, two groups of humans. One group they let eat whatever they wanted, and the other group they put on a calorie-restricted diet. They didn't let them eat a lot of food. Uh, they let them eat enough food, but not an, any excessive amount of food. And the group that was on the calorie-restricted diet lived 30% longer with 80% less age-related disease just from not overburdening your system with food. Also, the healthiest exercise on earth, they say, is walking. And it seems like people who walk live a really long time. Stress is a big factor, too, obviously. People who live in rural communities. Um, Sanjay Gupta on CNN had a big series on this kind of stuff. Maybe you could uh, Google that and uh, check into all the stuff that he researched and interviewed as he went to these communities throughout the world who were living a long time. Next. Nice. Brian, uh, we've got another question from Ashley in Muscat. And she asks, how did studying with Sri Lanka Patabi Joyce change your practice? You know, it was an amazing experience. Um, India in general is an amazing experience. Um, forget Patabi Joyce and just talk about being in India. That alone was uh, incredibly powerful. You, you know, you get to learn about yoga um, from their perspective. You know, it's like you get, um, you know, you get to smell the smells of yoga and eat the food of yoga and hear the sounds of yoga and see how yoga is interpreted um, into these people's lives as opposed to, uh, you know, maybe us just cherry. Um, the one main thing I learned from Patabi Joyce, who is the founder of Ashtanga Yoga, who I studied with over there and, and practiced for my first 12 years, um, really I learned two things. Okay, I learned um, how dynamic and interesting yoga can be um, in a physical practice, which was inspiring me because I was a, a fit and athletic person and um, that inspired me. Um, and I also learned everything I never would like to be as a yoga instructor by um, studying with him, which is really important, you know, because it uh, really pushed me towards, you know, how I want to practice and how I want to share this. Next. Ashley on the live chat is asking, hey, Brian, What's the best way to be a part of the class energy but not be distracted by it? Um, you know, I give the suggestion of just narrowing your eyeballs down to the perimeter of your yoga mat and not letting your eyeballs leave the perimeter of your yoga mat. Um, it's a challenge, but that's the best way. Also, you know, we're trying to stay with the breathing, right? Because uh, it gives us a focal point and, uh, you know, keeps us present because that breath spilling through your nose is spilling through your nose right now. And when you're present, you start noticing things, right? You start noticing you're getting distracted or such, and, you know, you can pull yourself back, if you'd like, to your practice. Next question. Michelle from London asks, uh, I seem to be having a bit of difficulty around juggling a daily yoga practice and other fitness goals, like going to the gym. Have you any tips on how to stay true to daily yoga practice and accomplish my fitness-slash-gym-based goals, too? Many thanks for the opportunity to ask this question, and Happy New Year. Uh, join the club, young lady. <laughs> We're all <laughs> trying to maintain our practice. Um, hopefully the challenge helped you. You know, I gave, I don't know if you just tuned in, but I uh, 
actually had addressed this a little earlier when I was uh, just mentioning to uh, to create a time in your day, a consistent time every day, every day, or a consistent time each day. So every Monday I practice here, every Tuesday I practice here. You know, um, you know, it's just a matter of importance and priority. That's all. How important is it to you? You know, if it's that important, then you have to make time for it. And uh, so sit down, take take 10 minutes, 20 minutes, sit there and figure out what time of day you can do this. And then clear your schedule and do it. Um, there's no way around that. There's no easy way to be consistent. It's very, very difficult, especially when you're being consistent doing something so confrontational and challenging, you know. Because the yoga is asking us um, to look at all these places that might not be so comfortable to look at and it's also asking us to break addictions and habit patterns and it's you know and it's not so egotistically gratifying you know or even sometimes you know it's not so sensually gratifying uh, you know it, it wouldn't be hard to get you know get get off the couch and make love with your lover or get off the couch and eat a beautiful meal you know but to get off your couch and you know really have to expend a ton of energy and not necessarily get the, the sensuous pleasure back. Um, you know, it's difficult. It's really difficult. One thing for me that really be more gentle with myself. I look forward to going to a massage, right? Because there's a sweetness um, when that goes into a knot in your body, right? Can you touch yourself the same way? I had difficulty for my first 12 years being consistent. I don't really have that difficulty anymore because, you know, I look forward to that sensuous touch. It still can be challenging, but it's also very sweet. And I hope you can find that. Next. Thanks, Brian. Sunana from Louisville asks, what is your balance between physical asana and meditation? Most days I don't have much time to myself, so I default to physical asana because I feel I'm efficiently covering both my physical and mental health needs. But that doesn't leave much time for sitting. Regarding meditation, do you have a recommendation as to how much time you spend in each practice? Anapa, vipassana, metta, gratitude, do you just go with what feels right that day or do you have specific goals? Sunana, that name sounds familiar. I don't know if I've met you before. I think I have. Um, I know I have. You're in the challenge, so I, I know that face. Hey, baby. Um, and your husband, right? You have a very sweet man as a husband, if I'm not mistaken. Anyways, uh, you know this is personal. Sunana, you know this is personal. Um, in a way, you are covering both in your asanas. If you're really tuned into your deep breathing, then you are doing meditation in motion. So it is true you are. Um, yet, there's a difference um, in seated meditation. There's a difference. So, um, you know, if you're asking me what my practice is right now, my practice is um, I do a half hour seated meditation and then I go into it anywhere from an hour to two hours of asanas. It's mine. Usually closer to an hour these days as I get older, you know? And then I try to do another seated meditation in the evening time um, of a half hour long. And I see that increasing as well. Um, but it's personal, you know? Why don't you, if you don't have time for both, you know, and you feel like you're being more efficient in the physical practice, because it is something that's needed and you are meditating at the same time, why don't you just tailor back that physical practice five or ten minutes and give yourself five, ten, fifteen minutes of isolated meditation. Just a little less physical and a little extra seated meditation. See how that goes. And, uh, you know, let that inform you. And maybe you'll get so much benefit from the seated meditation, you might even you know, tone the physical down even a little bit more. So, uh, you know, it's 75% physical, 25% meditation, or maybe eventually 50-50. Maybe even eventually 25% uh, physical, 75% meditation. I think that's the direction we're headed. 
See you later, Sunana. Thanks, Brian. Um, Sharon on the live chat asks, my 17-year-old daughter loves your classes and does them with me. She has spinal curvature, and do you have any recommendations for poses? Um, first of all, I, I love the fact that your daughter does it with you. One of the, the things that makes me happiest is when I see moms or dads and their kids practicing together. That's, that's pretty special. Um, you know, my suggestion is two things. It's number one, um, you know, the gentleness. You know, just practicing really, really gently. So, you know, you're assured that nothing gets irritated. And, um, and you know, I'm always talking about that in all my classes. So if you're doing, you're getting enough reminders of that. And the second thing that I would focus on is traction. Like just being really conscious in every pose, and I hope she's listening. If she's not, definitely share this with her. I know you will. Um, just in every pose, you know, be, she knows she has a spinal issue, right? So, you know, she knows that maybe the spine needs a little bit more attention or awareness, not only in her practice, but, you know, throughout her life. And so, you know, I would suggest just really being aware that in every pose, she's creating as much length and space as possible, you know, minimizing the compression on her spinal cord. So in every pose, just, you know, keep the crown of the head drawing away from the hips. Keep the chest drawing away from the navel. You know, keep that spine as long as can be. And, in pose, and, and, and then complement that with gentleness because maybe some poses, there's going to be a little compression, like in plow pose or something like that. So just tune in, see how it feels. Um, when the class is over, see how you feel. If everything feels okay, you're okay. But focus on traction and gentleness. Thank you. Next. We have a question from Stephen in Mount Pearl, Newfoundland. And he asks, so my body cracks and pops now. It feels like some parts go out of alignment and then yoga helps put it back together again. Should I take it to the point, to this point and get the relief? Or will that cause more damage over time? My left knee inside my left hip and right shoulder also do this. I've been pretty hard on this body over the years and would like it to last for as long time. Should yoga be a daily thing or can you overdo it? I also swim, walk, surf, etc. How do you feel over all these years of yoga? Do you mix other activities? And I would love to know what you recommend, knowing what you know now, wise one. <laughs> hey, yeah. Um, first of all, a workshop in Halifax. So I'll be up in, uh, in your region uh, in, at some point or another in the next couple years. Uh, so looking forward to that. A um, lot of questions in there. Um, you know, moderation is the key. Is it Stephen? Mod moderation is the key, Stephen. Um, and moderation is personal. But Moderation is just another word for gentleness, you know, and you sound like someone who maybe has uh, possibly been athletic and really been hard on your body, and, you know, I can relate to that. I was the same way. Um, but listen, there's a, there's a universal law that says the harder you are in anything, the faster you wear it out. Okay, I don't care what it is, your automobile, your marriage, or your body. You know, if you want to last as long as possible and feel as good as possible, it doesn't make sense to push hard. What makes sense is to be gentle. So, um, you know, you got to figure out what that means for you, what moderation means for you, um, and you got to be way more dominated by your wisdom than your vanity. Okay, give up all the other shit. You know, you ain't a spring chicken anymore. The goal here isn't to look pretty, be skinny, have overdeveloped muscles. The goal here is to be well and feel amazing, okay? And for that, you need gentleness, you know, to last as long as you can, feeling as good as possible. That's what's going to make your automobile last longer. It's what's going to make your marriage last longer. It's going to make, make your body last longer. It's not about how much you can do. It's about the quality of the touch. And in trying to be gentle like that or moderate, you really have to tune in. Right? You have to pay attention to what you're feeling because that's why you were given feelings. 
You know, and when you work with what you're feeling, when you start looking at your body as your partner and your partner speaking to you in the language of sensation, right? Then, and you stop jamming your agenda down your partner's throat, right? Then this starts to become healing. And then you will get that good feeling. You might not be able to go as far as you want to go. You might not end up looking like you want it to look. But none of that's necessary for health. You know, there's never been proof looser or stronger people are healthier and happier people. You know, this can't be a competition. But you can't really have this goal. You know, you got to tune in to what you need, you know. There's an old saying that says, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. You know, and that's kind of like goals. You know, you set this goal, but, you know, and it's like then we blindly try to get there. You know, how about have no goal and just except for showing up onto your mat and just see how it feels. Go to the degree that feels right. Do a little bit less as opposed to a little bit more. And I bet you you'll feel a lot better. Next question. We have a question from Christina in Turin, Italy. And she asks, I've been practicing with Brian and Travis Elliott online for the last three years moving to vinyasa power yoga from kundalini yoga and I'm a teacher in Kentucky myself I'm pretty happy with what I have reached up to now both physically and mentally and I'd like to know what is the next step in the path to deepen the practice I practice seven days a week some days more gentle classes some days more challenging I would like to know from Brian experience in which direction to move on if there is one thank you in advance www.dhamma.org. My answer to your question is meditation. It's the next step. And maybe as you learn that, you can bring that more into your kundalini, into your power yoga, whatever physical practice you have at any time. But the next step is no doubt meditation. You know, uh, they're telling us now that 90%, I'm exaggerating a little, I think it's 88%, but I like to say 90%. Sounds better. 90% of physical ailment is coming from mental stress. This is what meditation deals with. You know, so if you really want to be physically healthy, you know, you got to address the state of your mind. You know, start eradicating the malevolent and strengthening the benevolent. And then share that with others. You know, if you want to look at your mind state, actually, let's take it a little deeper. You want to look at all of our mind states, then just turn on CNN. Or being that you're in Kentucky, turn on Fox, okay? Um, what you're going to see when you turn on CNN or Fox, you're going to see, um, you know, you're going to see the totality of all of our minds put together. That's what it's created. You know, if there's going to be a shift out there in the world, if there's going to be a shift in our lives, um, then we're going to have to shift where our mind dwells. That's meditation. Enjoy. Next. Thanks, Brian. Marta from Cambridge asks, I'm due to change my yoga mat. How can I choose the good one amongst hundreds of choices? Thank you for keeping me sane this Christmas. Buy the cheapest mat and just put one of those covers on top of the mat, that little towel or carpet that they sell everywhere now, right? And then it doesn't matter what mat you use anymore, really, unless, you know, you're you have some vulnerabilities and you need something thicker or thinner, right? So if you, you know, you have pointy bones and you want something a little thicker, then get a thicker one or, you know, if it's not an issue, get a thinner one. The mat doesn't matter because now you have this cover on the mat and you're doing the yoga on this cover. Um, Gaia makes one of those. Yoga, uh, Manduka makes one of those. They all have these covers. And then when you're done practicing, you just take the cover off and you throw it in the wash and, you know, you put the cover back on for the next one. So you're no longer doing yoga on your yoga mat. You know, if I was going to make a suggestion, just buy an all-natural mat, right? Something that's not going to stay around on the planet for the next 17,000 years. 
Next question, please. Amy from Shaker Heights, Ohio asks, do you have an experience with or an interest in leading meditation that is more like basic sitting or zazen? I appreciate the value in doing gratitude meditation. However, I'm working on sitting and labeling thoughts, tolerating discomfort, staying with breath, and returning to the present moment. Um, you know, we have a, a meditation class that's online, and it has three segments to it. There is the gratitude, and there is the compassion, but there's also the wisdom. And the wisdom meditation sounds like what you're talking about. So um, it's 15 minutes long. Obviously, you can uh, put it on pause and do it as long as you like. Um, so yeah, I am interested in that, and I practice that, and that's actually my main meditation, and um, we have it there for you. Although there's a lot of variations on that, so you know the one that I'm sharing with you might not be something you appreciate, but God knows there's a lot of choices out there. Mindful meditation is, you know, sweeping over our country right now. So just do a little investigation. Personally. Um, I'm really appreciative of it, and yeah, I think that's where we're all headed. So you know, maybe I will be leading more and more classes like that. You know, I'm just trying to, um, you know, meet people, you know, where they happen to be right now. And um, I think it's, you know, it's really physical, and people are slowly starting to open up to meditation, and we're slowly giving it to them. Thanks. Next. Um, Sharon also asked from Columbia, Maryland, um, can you recommend any poses to help with more restful sleep? Um, also, do you plan on coming back to Baltimore, Maryland uh, or DC anytime soon? We took your master class years ago when you were here and loved every sweaty second of it. My two to three year goal is to take teacher training with you. I've been doing practicing with you virtually for over 20 years. Namaste. Namaste. You know, I remember those sweaty classes in Baltimore. I had a great time. What a great community. Um, I went to that studio twice, um, and then they had me lined up to come back, and, and then they called me and said, you know, um, can you do something new? You know, every time you come, you do the same thing. Can you do something new? And um, and I I said, no. I mean, I, I, I can't do anything new. I do what I do. I mean, and so uh, they decided not to host me again. Um, you know, I'm, you know, they don't change the Ten Commandments every day. You know, Rumi doesn't change his poetry every day. Um, you know, this, what I'm going around sharing is a, a message, and I'm supporting people in their practice. Um, and I feel like that's what these workshops are. They're a community of like-minded people coming together to support each other in a certain mentality. And I'm not going to stop supporting people in that mentality. So, you know, I don't have anything new. I got the same old thing, you know, over and over again. So um, I didn't get invited back, but hopefully maybe another studio over there will, will have me. And to answer your other question, uh, um, try uh, – try – my suggestion is maybe try something less vigorous if you're um, practicing at nighttime to help with sleep. Um, try the restorative or the yin classes, something a little bit less vigorous, especially the restorative. If you notice, I was in that restorative class we offer. And just a little side note, there's another restorative class being filmed today, so there'll be another option. And... Uh, Within a short amount of time, there'll be 10 more options because um, we're going to do a series of 10. Um, but certainly when I was done with that restorative class, um, I didn't want to move. I could have stayed there and had one nice nap. So try something a little bit less vigorous. You know, sometimes the vigorous classes get you going. You know, they open you up, get the energy flowing, and then you're wired and you go to bed and, you know, your body's a little fatigued and, you know, enjoying laying there, but your mind you know, might be flowing with energy. So try something a little less vigorous. Thanks. Next. Thanks. Kimberly from Houston asks, I teach a chair and chair class for seniors or those rehabbing in wheelchairs from injury. What would be the one thing you would say to them in class? I may try burping out there. Is I may try 
burping that there is only one Brian. I need a way to share laughter. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> that's great. I'm sure I would think of something if I was there. Um, you know, because it's really, you know, it's really what comes up in the moment. You know, but you know, personally for me, you know, I try to be really supportive of people, and you know. You get older, or you get handicapped, and um, you know it can be very mentally and emotionally difficult for people. You know to be accepting of where they're at, and um, you know more important than laughing, which is very important, um, is loving. Is loving. You know, loving. You know, getting people to be okay with who they are and where they're at getting people to uh, trust and accept their process and getting people to see um, the power in their process and how what they're going through um, is being given to them as an opportunity to learn and grow and become all that they're becoming. Um, so yeah, laughing is important but loving is more important and uh, you know when you do that you guys, you'll, you'll just find humor in all the little silliness of uh, humanness because really that's all I'm finding humor and I'm not going out of my way to make a joke you know I mean I burp you know to inspire people not to judge me you know that's all it wasn't really for the laughter and believe me a lot of people don't laugh they think to themselves I'm a sick fucking pig but I'm doing it for another reason you know it's probably why I drop the f-bombs and talk about THC you know, I'm just, you know, giving people this safe environment to stop judging. That's all. So, um, good luck, sister. That sounds like uh, an amazingly uh, fulfilling occupation you have. Thanks for doing it. Next. I've got a, one from Daniela in Atlanta. And she asks, how do you keep yourself motivated to practice after long, tiring days, a.k.a. every day? Well, it's very difficult to practice after a long tiring day. That's why for me, I practice before my long tiring day. And then what I notice two things. I have time to practice, right? That's when I practice because uh, um, I'm not so tired. And my long tiring days are less long and tiring because my practice um, helps me through it tremendously. So try to practice before your long, tiring day. Thanks. Next. Karen from the online chat is asking, Brian, do you feel that yoga and walking are the only necessary aspects physically to keep your body healthy in the long term? It's very personal. Karen, is it? Yes. Very personal, Karen. Um, but for me, that's all I do. I mean, maybe if uh, I lived by a beach that had incredibly warm water, you know, I might throw in swimming on some days instead of walking. Um, but, you know, the biggest question in fitness is when is enough enough? You know, when is it no longer about wellness and now it's about vanity? You know, how much do we need? You know, I think a, a nice long walk Long means, you know, between 45 minutes and an hour and a half for me. Um, and, uh, you know, a nice flowing yoga class that, you know, helps me release the tension throughout my body and, and increase circulation and maybe eradic eradicate, you know, some of that incessant compression that gravity is putting on my body. Next. Thanks, Brian. I, I think we've gone through all of the questions that were submitted. Wow. Yay. Good, good, good. Um, I want to thank you guys for, uh, for giving me this opportunity to do this. Uh, you know, I've never experienced this format before, and um, I thought it was going to be easier than it was in the sense that, you know, I really, you know, want to have poignant answers for you. You know, I, I really want to be hopeful. And... Um, I, what I realized while doing this is that there is no real easy answer. You know, that, you know, this is challenging and this is so personal and to such a large degree, 
you know we all do have to figure it out for ourselves but you know my hope is is that you know I've been supportive in, in some way or another and helpful in some way or another um, so thank you and um, you know those of you that are interested uh, you know we're gonna do our very 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 first online teachers training um, coming up our goal is to have it up um, for registration on March 1st and um, you know just to, to, to show my appreciation um, for you guys to give me this opportunity and um, to start working out the kinks of this format you know I want to invite all of you um, to be involved um, by just letting you know that um, anybody that was involved in this chat will be guaranteed a spot in this training um, so if there is limited amount of people allowed into the training you will be one of those people and not only that we'll definitely throw a discount your way and uh, we'll figure out what that could be all right um, am I missing anything miss Laura should uh, should I, I say anything pertaining to the challenge that maybe I missed I think you did great Brian everyone Ooh. seems really happy <laughs> Cool, you guys. Uh, thank you, thank you very, very, very much for um, for being with us here. That's it from me and my doggies. <laughs> Namaste. Thanks, everyone. Namaste.